Hi, welcome to Tuts Plus. My name is Bob Flisser. If you read David Allen's popular book, Getting Things Done, you'll see that he outlines five major phases of how you can get things done, and OneNote is great for doing this. And those five major phases of getting things done are, number one, collect information, process information, organize the information, review the information, and then finally, do things. Now, OneNote won't actually do things for you. I don't know, maybe that's coming up in another version, but it'll certainly help you with the first four. So this will help you not just to sort through everything that you have to do, but also to prioritize everything. So when you actually get to doing things, it's a lot more automatic. So OneNote can help you keep track of all kinds of different types of information, like researching products, keeping info on products you already bought, maybe making notes of websites that you want to spend some time on, articles or books you need to read, maybe meeting notes that you need to review, and of course sound and images and videos and all kinds of things. So I want to start by showing you the sections and pages that I have set up in my OneNote. And this is kind of subjective because you may work a little differently than I do. But the important part is how the information flows and how and when you go and attend to everything in here. Now, what I've done here is I have a separate notebook called GTD. And you see here I have these five sections. Call them sections, call them tabs, kind of interchangeable. The first one I have here is called collection. And I think of the collection tab as kind of a data dump. It's a triage area where I dump everything into OneNote, and then I come in later and I sort through it. It's not a permanent storage area. Things come in, things go out. And in a little while, I'll show you some examples of that. Now, the next tab I have over here is called Current. And Current is what I use for projects that I'm working on right now. So maybe I've got some tutorials to write. I have some websites to do. There's some travel that I have coming up. And one thing that's nice in OneNote is that when you have a section, when you have a tab, and you create pages, you can have subpages. Now, something that's new in the 2013 version of OneNote and also in the new Mac version of OneNote is there's no button here to create a subpage. See up here where it says Add Page? If you click that, you'll get a page on the first level. The only way to create a subpage of an existing page is you have to select it and then in Windows press Control Alt Shift N or on the Mac Command Alt Shift N. And I'll do that here and that will create a new subpage. I'll just right click and delete that. Of course, you can always take pages and kind of drag them to the left to make them a full page or drag them to the right to indent them and make them a subpage. The other thing also here is when you select a main page, you have this little up arrow. You can click that to collapse the section. And then of course you can click that down arrow to expand it again. Now let's take a look at the review tab. And the review tab is what I use for things that I need to read or watch or listen to, maybe think about sometime later. So I have some marketing ideas, maybe some websites that I want to visit, books to read, articles to read, videos to watch, and so on. Now, one of the categories that David Allen talks about is what he calls someday maybe, and I'll go over here to that section. This is for things that are some point in the future, you may or may not even do them. So for example, I'm thinking of creating a new sign for my office. And that's something that's not critical right now. Or maybe I want to build a cabinet or look for vacation rentals. So that's not something that I need to attend to right now. When you've completed a job or a project, you don't want all the information clogging up OneNote and taking up space where you need space for current things. So that's why you have an archive, or that's why I created an archive. So you can see, for example, items that I purchased. I have in here. So that way, maybe if I need to buy some more paper and toner, or I want to buy more coffee, I could just click on those and replace the order. Or maybe I'm having a problem with something. You can see here I bought a computer, and if I have to return it because it's not working or something like that, I have all the information right in front of me. And also, let's say travel that I've already completed. I have all that info over there. This is also nice if you need to itemize your expenses at tax time. If you put everything into OneNote, you have it all right there. Also, you, I have a, an area here for scanned correspondence. So let's say I'm doing stuff on old-fashioned paper. I could put it into OneNote. The way I do that 
is I go up to the insert tab and I use scanned image and that runs my scanner. And you can even see the little pop-up help here is telling you that OneNote will actually do OCR so it'll recognize the text in the images that you scan. Of course it has to be a good enough quality. Now let's talk about the reference section over here or as OneNote calls it a section group. Now if you want to create a new tab, a new section, you can just click the little plus sign here so that's not a big deal. But if you want a group of them, also this is something that's new in the 2013 version and in the Mac version. There is no button, there is no item on the tab to create a section group. The only way to do it is put your mouse pointer somewhere over here on the right side, click the right mouse button, and now you can choose new section group. I'm not actually going to do that. I'll bring you into reference. So I've done that already. And you can see here I've arranged my reference in categories that suit me. So I have one section here, one tab for technical notes. So whether it's for Windows 8 or Windows 7, hardware information, I have all of that right here. Websites, these are websites that I want to keep track of. And I have pages here for different types of websites. I do WordPress development. So I have a tab here and any kind of code that I need. I have over here so I can simply select code that I need, copy it and paste it in. And I have another section for other types of source code. So if I'm doing development in JavaScript or PHP or something like that, I have all of that. And you see here is another one of these little collapsible areas here and I can go and grab anything that I need. And also because I teach Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator and Excel, I have sections separate just for those. Let's go back up here. I'm going to click this little up arrow so we get back into the main section. And I want to show you the process flow for getting things done in action. And there are three examples I want to show you. One is entering text and graphics directly. Another way is grabbing information from a web page. And the third way I'm going to show you is how to grab info from Microsoft Outlook. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the collection section. Now I can type stuff in. I'm not going to waste your time with that. I've already done it. And I have this page here called Business Improvement Meeting Notes. And I've been doing some business improvement discussions with people in my area. So I have some stuff typed in, some dummy text here. And I have a picture to put in that's uh, germane to it. Also, you can use tags in OneNote. You notice this little yellow star here. Let me click in the paragraph and I'll go to the Home tab. You see that's marked as important. And if you click this little down arrow here, not this down arrow, but this little down arrow with a hat, that shows you all different types of tags that you can use. So I simply marked it as important. Other tags here you might want to mark things is to do, for example. I'll just close that up. Now I'm not yet ready to move this page somewhere else. Let's go and collect some additional information. So let's say, for example, I'm teaching a Macintosh course and I want a list of keyboard shortcuts to give to people in the class. So I'm going to go to this page here on Apple's website. And if you can't read that, I'll show you here in bigger text. That's the page that I'm on right now. And I'm going to select text. The first text up here I don't need. Now I have this title here of OS 10 keyboard shortcuts, but I'm going to start. I don't need this text of what a modifier can use. So I'm going to take from this here. And I'm just going to select down to the bottom. Down to about there, I'm going to copy to the clipboard. I'll press Control C or Command C on the Mac. And I'm going to create a brand new page. And I'll call this. So I could have copied that from the page. But anyway, I'll click over here. And I'll paste Control V or Command V on the Mac. And it pastes everything in. You see here's a reference to the page that I was on. Scroll back up to the top. And you can see it's all still nicely formatted with tables and special characters and all that. Incidentally, the 2013 version of OneNote does a much better job of keeping the formatting from web pages than the older versions of OneNote did. So now let's look at the third way of collecting information, and that's for Microsoft Outlook. A few months ago, I bought myself an iPad Air, and Apple sent me this welcome email with all kinds of info on it. And not ready to look at this and read this right now, but I want to save this for later use. So what I'm going to do here is in the message tab, I've got this button here for send to OneNote. Now on your computer, if you're running at a high resolution, this send to OneNote might be a little bigger, but I'm just going to click that. And this says, okay, where do you want to put it? 
So I have a bunch of notebooks here. Here's my GTD notebook. I'll click that little plus sign to expand it. And I'm going to put it right here in that collection section. Click OK. So after I click that, you see OneNote just pops right up. And here's the email message. The title of the email message is up here. And over here is the page. Here's the header info. And if I scroll down, I can see here is exactly as it appeared in the email itself is now this new page in OneNote. OK, so we've done collection. We've done organizing. Now we'll go and do the processing. And reviewing information is something that I kind of do on my own time. So let's start with this email here, welcome to your new iPad Air. This is something that I want to review later. Not way later to put in reference, but sometime maybe over the next week or so. So what I'm going to do is I'll put my mouse pointer right here on the page title. I'll right click and I'll choose move or copy. And you see this is basically the same dialog box that we saw from Outlook just a moment ago. So I'm going to put this in the review section. I'll click that and see I can move or copy. I want to move. And now you see it's gone. When I go to the review section, see there it is. Let's go back to collection. And let's take this maybe OS 10 keyboard shortcuts. This is something that I want to keep in reference because it's something that I want to have for whenever I teach an OS 10 course. So I'll right click it, move or copy. And I'm going to go to reference CC because it's a section, has its own little plus sign to click and uncollapse. And I'll put that in tech notes. Now, if I want, I can go in and create another tab here just for OS 10 or just for Apple stuff. But I'll leave it in Tech Notes. Click Move. It's gone. When I go into the Reference section and I go into Tech Notes, I see there it is. Always gets put at the bottom. Let's go back up. Click that up arrow. And the last one I'll take is this Business Improvement Notes. Now this time, rather than going through that dialog box, I'll show you kind of an easier way. This is something that's in one of my current projects. So what I'm going to do is instead of right clicking, I'll take it and I'm going to hold down the mouse button. I'm going to drag. See, I have that little four headed arrow and I'm going to drag onto the current tab. And notice when I'm, and I'm still holding down the mouse button. And as long as I'm holding down the mouse button, it pops up and I can just let go and boom, it just gets put down there. So that's just another way of moving a page around. So you can see that the system of getting things done is a good framework for keeping a handle on all of your information. It lets you set priorities and then work with them the way you want and how you want. And all of the moving around of pages like I just did, this is something that I will do maybe once a day. I'll do, let's say, in the morning. If you're very busy, you might find you're doing it twice a day. That's entirely up to you. And OneNote is flexible. So if you find that these tabs aren't exactly working for you, maybe you want a whole section for something rather than just an individual page, you could do that and you can change it around anytime you want. You could use OneNote however it's most convenient for you. So I hope you found this helpful and I wish you the best of luck with it. Once again, my name is Bob Flisser for Tuts Plus and thanks a lot for watching.